Our next panelist has worked on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, The Wolverine, and Logan, for which he won an Art Director's Guild Award. He's reunited with James Mangold for Ford versus Ferrari. Please welcome Francois Ardouy. Hello, thanks for being here. Happy to be here, very exciting. Uh, I know this film has uh, been in the works for a few years, uh, so when did James bring you on board? Um, so we were prepping another movie that we thought was uh, going to happen <laughs> at Fox, and he had two scripts, mm -hmm. uh, Ford versus Ferrari and a uh, Patty Hearst movie, and I thought for sure that it was going to be Ford versus Ferrari next when I read both scripts, but mm -hmm. it was going to be the Patty Hearst movie. So we were going into production, and the whole thing just fell apart in about... <laughs> 12 hours, <laughs> it, it was the most, it was that we had a production office and everything and everybody, it just went, just went, just the house of cards just fell apart. And then the next Monday, we just slotted right into Ford versus Ferrari and uh, and uh, went right into sort of production wow. on it. Uh, yeah, it was, a, but it was a project that had been around for a very long time with multiple directors. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very, very mo difficult film to put together because of the finances of it. Um, the cars involved are worth tens of millions of dollars each. And so it's very, very challenging to just figure out uh, a production plan for making a movie that's, you know, that's not $300 million, mm -hmm. basically. So, that, so it took a long time for that to come together. I know you're not a car guy, right? I, well, <laughs> or you, or you no, weren't I when I mean, you I started wasn't, this. <laughs> I wasn't a car um, fanatic. Okay. I mean, I like cars, but I didn't know very much about these classic cars mm -hmm. in the story. So but, the, you know, as a production designer, you have to become an expert. It's part of the job is to become an expert in the material. And that's what makes it fun because you can go from doing a Western to doing a sci-fi film to doing a period car movie. And, and it's the learning, I think, that's really the most uh, fascinating part of it. You become a, a you don't know what's going to be next and you get to, a chance to, to grow and and to, to learn about a different facet in history, maybe, or, or something completely, mm -hmm. you know, there's always something new. So where did you start with research for this? Was it just looking at, like, archives? Because I, I know the Le Mans track is not the same as it was in Well, the first thing, you know, the, the movie isn't just about the Le Mans race. It's basically the third act of the film. It's mm -hmm. uh, Jim calls it a reverse Saving Private Ryan. It's sort of a lot of drama and character development in the beginning, and then it kind of builds and builds and builds and culminates in this incredibly sort of immersive and exciting um, race sequence that's a very, very long, long race at the end of the movie, and it sort of takes a breath away. Um, but we st I started looking at research at Le Mans. Pretty, we, we went out to France and looked at the track, and um, the the... Everything is different. And there's nothing, there's literally not one inch of that location that still exists in the way that it did in 1966. Mm -hmm. We looked at 60 millimeter footage of the track from about the time, and it was basically um, f narrow farm roads that would go in through the countryside. And uh, there was a wonderful 60 millimeter film that we found, um, and they're doing a, a, a hot lap, that's what you call it, a hot lap around, like, uh, and dodging farmers on bicycles and you can see cows in the pastures <laughs> basically and it's really and there are no barriers on mm -hmm. the sides of the roads and it's very and then you know you come back and the um the the finish line and the starting line is dominated by a, this incredibly massive 1000 foot long the grandstand, cement yeah. uh, grandstand mm -hmm. and pits building that no longer exists it was uh, torn down in the 1980s so that doesn't even exist so uh, we, you know, that was the, the the daunting realization that it had to be sort of created and and pieced together, um, piece it up piece by piece. Mm -hmm. So how was it building the grandstand? How did, how how big was it? The well, they we um, we ended up building a, a building that was about um, seven hundred feet long, six six hundred feet long. About mm -hmm. it was uh, three stories tall, interior exterior had uh, flags on top of that, so it was about 60 feet tall <laughs> with the flags. Um, the whole back was also addressed, and we, were, we built it onto a, an airport in Agua Dulce, California, um, so that the cars could get up to over 100 miles an hour mm -hmm. as it was going by the, the grandstands. And that presented its own problems because um, nowadays there's a safety department at all the studios, and we couldn't have a car like lose control and fly into our yeah. cardboard set 
<laughs> it looks like concrete, but it's made out of you know wood. And so at the last minute, our safety uh, represent representative said that all of our pony walls, the slow walls along the track, had to be built out of solid cement. Oh with uh, I-beams going down eight feet into the ground so to withstand a <laughs> 100-mile-an-hour crash. So we had 500 feet of uh, concrete barriers actually had to go oh in at sort God. of the last minute. So it was, it was a pretty involved set. Were there any crashes? There were, there were really no crashes. No one was hurt on the making of Ford wow. versus Ferrari. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah, it was really <laughs> remarkable, the, the, the level... I mean, we had some incredible drivers and in the entire stunt team, stunt driving team. They were all like, I mean, we had actually real race car, driver, race car drivers driving uh, uh, during a lot of the, the, the setups and things. And so it was uh, yeah, really testament to their abilities that no one was hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and the track itself, you had to shoot it in four locations over well, two states. <laughs> well, that's another thing that I didn't realize when I started the movie. Um, the track is called the Circuit de Sarthe. It's the Circuit de Sarthe. And it's, a, it's probably the most famous track in the world. It's so famous, in fact, that every chicane and turn has a name. <laughs> and, it has, and, and each piece of the track has, this, has all these stories about famous things that happened since the 1930s at each individual part of the track. So uh, we ended up having to cast and recreate a lot of those turns and, um, and iconic pieces. So you know, when you leave the, the stands, you hit the Dunlop Bridge, which is a very, very famous um, arch bridge that we recreated at Road Atlanta in Atlanta as a full-scale um, uh, set piece. Then you turn and you turn into the Dunlop Corner and you go along the Mulsane Strait. The Mulsane Strait is the biggest straightaway the, where you can go up over well over 200 miles an hour. So we built that, at, uh, we found that 45 minutes outside of Savannah, Georgia. And at that point, you're going past scenery at 150, uh, 150 feet per second. Okay. So, you know, 150 <laughs> feet is the size of a large soundstage. You yeah. know? So you're, you're fill, you're, you're, each one of those seconds has to be thought about with uh, signage and graphics and billboards and extras and, and uh, what have you. And so um, then, that, then you've got the Mulsane Corner into uh, Indianapolis and Arnage and all of these and the White House Corner. And we built a... So for the majority of the track, we went to a location in uh, Savannah, Georgia, where there was this wonderful um, track called Grand Prize Raceway that was kind of forgotten. It hadn't been used in many, many years, and it was overgrown, and it felt like countryside, which was very, very good. So that was uh, about a, a three-mile track that we completely dressed and then carved up into the individual uh, famous pieces mm -hmm. of, of the race. So we built a... Uh, for, for a little French cottage and a garden and, wow. and lined it with signage and all of that. So it's pretty involved. Mm -hmm. And then the other parts were in California or? Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the first unit photography was all in California. Okay. It was all in Southern California. And that was really important um, for Jim because he wanted to capture, it was, it's really the heart of the story. It's a Southern California story. And I, I, I kind of see it as a, as a as a as a, a side story to the right stuff, you know, mm -hmm. the, you have these incredibly f brave um, race car drivers who are doing things for the first time. They're at a time when they don't have the safety uh, la layers that you have today, mm -hmm. and it's, it was very very dangerous, and um, it was very 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 dangerous sport. And in fact, the the most deadly. Um, sporting accident, I think, still to this day, happened at Le Mans in 1957, I think, where a car, a couple cars flipped mm -hmm. and went into the crowd, and it was just absolutely horrible. So um, it was a really interesting time in Southern California with these sports cars that were being manufactured, the Corvettes and the Cobras and the Porsches, and these kids were taking them out to the desert, and driving mm -hmm. fucking fast <laughs> and and people would just come out with their picnic baskets and it just it was a it was a a ground spell s swell a sport that was just coming up from the people it wasn't created by corporate interests it was sort of a, a it just came out as a, a, because of these cars and it was the right time at the right place so we wanted to capture that spirit and um shelby american was in Venice Beach, for example, you know, and mm -hmm. you had the surf culture and all of that and that excitement. And um, it must have been a really interesting time to have Carol Shelby and Ken Miles and 
and this culture in Southern California in the early 1960s. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, manage the continuity when when you have you know when you have to piece together the the full track from all these different locations? Well, that was the biggest challenge of the entire movie because the the I don't know if anybody everyone knows this the Le Mans race is a 24 hour race so it starts at 4 p.m. in the afternoon right on the dot no matter what it starts at 4 p.m. and it's a running what's called a running start it's very very famous for that the drivers all have to line up on their numbers and they all have to run into their cars, start the cars up and then and then go and they can't stop until four o'clock the next day. Um, so that presents a lot of continuity problems because there's this, the, the, you've got the sun that's setting and then it's nighttime and then there's rain, there's rain in our story and then that has to dry and then it's the next day and it's dawn and then the whole, you know, so, so the we the entire sequence of 30 minutes in the movie maybe has to be com very carefully storyboarded we work very closely with a storyboard artist who's incredible named uh, gabriel hardman who's storyboarded the entire sequence and then that goes to previs and so the um the entire sequence is previs and then taken apart and then talk we talk about in many many production meetings about who's doing what and what the light is supposed to be and and how these shots are going to be um, uh, accomplished, and where, and when, and time of day, and all that. Mm 